how to use social media to your advantage to become more powerful. Your first step should be to stop looking at, stop perceiving these apps as sources of entertainment and pleasure. That is crucial. They're much more than that, both positively and negatively. Your phone basically is stronger than you, has more control over you, and it knows that you will never find out this discrepancy, nor question its dominance over you. Start questioning everything you do. That is the secret to an epic life that constitutes stability, success, and the eradication of insecurity, doubt, and failure. Become aware of your own actions. Analyze if they're benefiting you or screwing you. So let's take your phone today. Your phone is not an innocent invention. It was once upon a time when its functions were limited to calling and receiving calls and sending out messages. It was simple. At that time, your role as a consumer was to pay the phone bills and that was it. But now your role as a consumer has changed completely. Now your role begins the moment you turn your phone on because just by clicking on any of these apps, you start making them money. So the degree of importance of your new role as a consumer is based on how much time you spend on the phone. Nowadays, you are a great consumer only if you are addicted. And by God's name, they're nailing it. Two, you are addicted. Accept it. You're going to say, I'm uninstalling these apps, deactivating Facebook, screw my phone, I will throw it away. But it's not just you that is the enabler. Unfortunately, everyone around you is an enabler in this addiction. You want to check out what your crush or girlfriend has uploaded, what she has been up to. You're in love with thousands of dumb memes and repetitive jokes on your like pages. You can't live without your Facebook groups or checking out hot pictures of girls, actresses, models on your Instagram. What the hell are you talking about? If you leave social media, you become a social pariah. You wouldn't know what others are talking about. And there is an inherent need in you to be included, to be part of a group. Leaving social media is equivalent to being antisocial. The question is, are you prepared? This isn't a challenge to your ego. Ego doesn't guide destinies, but downfalls. The reason behind this point is only to explain that it is pointless because the world around us has changed permanently. Even if you give up your phone now, it will only be a matter of time for your enablers and psychological triggers to convince you to get back on it. So, is it useless to think of a solution? No, because there is a solution, but it isn't enough. You will have to make an adjustment in your personality to become eligible to use that solution. Three, recognize the need in you to be more powerful. If you don't want to be, then any step is fucking great. There's a quote. If you don't know where you are going, any road will get you there. If you have no inclinations, ambitions or destinations, then everything is awesome. Like the song from the Lego movie, everything is awesome. The character and the population that lived in the world had no meaning in their lives. They were just living according to the rules. So everything was awesome. Your need to be somewhere, to do something, carves out an entirely new path that is designed exclusively by you and for you. The question is how badly do you want to get there? We are living in a cesspool of bullshit inventions and temptations and models and great TV shows and fucking Facebook. In this time, you're required to make extraordinary efforts to become conscious enough to rise above this pathetic trend of seeking self-validation by likes and self-sacrificing our identities to be cool. Because that is what everybody is doing. The question is, do you want to be like everyone else? Or do you have your own destiny planned out in your mind? Because if you do, only then and only then can you use social media to your advantage. Because it knows how to conquer you, control you and make you its addict. It is studying your search history, what you watch, what you click on and only presenting you options it knows will make you stay longer. And you cannot fight that because all these suggestions of new content make you happy. Anything that knows it makes you happy also knows it has got you by your balls. And these apps want you to stay on them forever, even if it means destroying all the possibilities a day has to offer for you. Either you conquer your addictions or your addictions will control you. Which brings us to point four, opportunity versus pleasure. Those are the two options internet broadly has for you. You know why people from great universities get great jobs? because those degrees basically are a testament of your skills. Those degrees tell the employer that you have a very trained brain in that skill. That's it. Degrees have no other purpose. The end game, the keyword, the point is skill. Acquire superior skills and you will dominate the game. This applies to all aspects of life. It is common knowledge. So if degrees are only a written assurance of your skill, anybody with superior skills minus the degree will beat you. And it happens in all walks of life. 
I'm not saying that degrees aren't important. After all, you earned it because of those skills. So skill is the game. Enhance your skills. Everything can be learned and it's available on the internet if you want to. There are tutorials for everything, breaking it down to its basic A, B, C, D. Do you want to? That is the question. The tools of learning are at your disposal. A lot of people message me. I want to be a musician, a photographer, a designer or anything, but I'm stuck in a job or college which I don't like. So should I quit it? At what time do you come back? 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m.? What do you do afterwards? Let's say you sleep at 12. That's four hours. How do you use those four hours? Are you Googling, researching, learning from tutorials, practicing, watching lectures, documentaries, interviews of accomplished people from that field? Or you come back and start playing multiplayer video games, watching YouTube videos, open your Facebook, chat with girls, chat with guys about bullshit, hang around, watch a couple of motivational videos and get confused. You tell me. At any job, you always know the kind of skills you need that will immediately give you a raise, rise in position and permanently change the situation of your life. But people are so satisfied with that excuse because it gives them the opportunity to whine, justify and blame their stagnancy on. There are thousands of websites, channels on YouTube that can teach you those skills and you know that. But you never googled it or you did google and after finding out how much work it is, immediately resigned. I want to ask the people who want to make a shift in career. Clearly you're not exceptional at your job or studies because when you're not interested in something you won't be doing it much. It irritates you. So what are you doing with all that time? Here are my guesses. Watching motivational speakers and wishing they can solve your problems. Finding out an interest that surprisingly gives a purpose to your life but in the very next step finding a problem that will stop you from pursuing it example job college and then accepting that as long as i have this problem i will never be able to follow my interest focus on this word accepting you have accepted a self-created bullshit explaining yourself why you cannot pursue this dream you have 16 hours a day during which you are active let's say you give 10 hours to your job or college that's about 60 percent of your day what are you doing with the rest of 40 percent and let's not forget weekends two complete days off four times a month what are you doing then let me tell you, because you've accepted this bullshit explanation, you give the rest of your day without any guilt to your escapes, one of which is phone addiction. In your head, you're already convinced that you can't pursue your interest as long as you're stuck in this job or college. So the theory is you cannot start something until you have quit the other thing entirely. Why? Why can't you do both? The explanation for that is you want to give your 100% to your interest. Why don't you start with 20%? 30%. Even if you quit your job or college, you're not going to give your 100% because you haven't even considered dealing with your phone addiction and all sorts of habits. If you simply manage these addictions, you will find enough time to easily manage the two. And that's the solution. But it cannot be applied. Coming back to point three, you need to have an obsession, a destiny planned in your mind strong enough to overpower your addictions. Only then can you put social media to your advantage. Once you have that, what do you need to do? Evaluate the subscriptions and pages that you follow on these social medias. Internet is an electronic universe. Manage your subscriptions by the ratio of 90-10. 90% of the information you follow should be around your interest. Remember, interest, not work. Let's say you spend roughly four hours on, on Facebook and YouTube every day. Now apply 90s to 10. 90% of your homepage should then comprise A. Channels that are growing your knowledge in your area of study thereby enhancing your skills. B. Channels that break creative paradigms in your field, that showcase applications of your work in unusual daily activities and practices, thereby stimulating your creative senses, opening up new doors of opportunities and most importantly, giving you perspective. C. Keeping up with updates. This is very important because with most people, success gets minimized out of lack of knowledge. In order to dream big, you've got to know what big is. And not only that, but what's the eligibility to be that big? Most people look at certain designations and positions and deem them impossible because they simply never bothered themselves to find out the technical steps to reach there. For example, if you were asked to fly a plane right now, you'd in a moment render it impossible because looking at the complex setup, buttons, the apparatus in the cockpit, all of it would confuse you. But at the same time, there are complete morons in this world who are professional pilots. If you don't know how something works, 
doesn't mean it is impossible. The biggest, baddest job in your field is held by a human. You are a human too. So get to know how and it will become achievable. D. Examples that inspire you. Being in touch with content coming directly from sources who have achieved what you dream of is a great motivator. For example, people whose objectives are fitness oriented get inspired when they watch professional bodybuilders and regularly seek pieces of advice regarding food, exercise, sleeping, mindset, etc. Now apply the same behavior to everything. This again enhances your knowledge, keeps you in the game, keeps you motivated, gives you ideas, perspective. E. Finance. Learn about money. Yes, your 90% should have your interest and you're interested in money. So why not learn about it? Find channels that are interestingly engaging you with saving, investing, how to grow money, how to multiply it, what's new in the market, what are the rising industries, how can you earn an extra buck? Knowledge is the best of things. Instead of excessively learning jokes from videos, memes, watching pointless reactions, why don't you learn how to be smarter with your money? F. News. International global events. Yes, your 90% should include this. Why? Because you need to be able to have conversations with anybody. Knowledge gives you that strength, that edge where a lot of people would by default shut up. People love opining about international national events to show that they are worldly. It's a very common human trait of people who feel superiorly of themselves. When you are in the business of making money, beat any field, you're gonna meet a lot of these people. So instead of shutting yourself up and acting as a mere receiver of their bullshit, why not become able to hold up a conversation? In life, you will find out that most of the times, success does not come from your abilities to perform, but from your ability to bullshit. And in order to become a world-class bullshitter, you need a basic grasp of facts and points of view. G. Aspirational visualization. What do you want to own in life? Forget 5-10 years. What kind of a life, qualities, mind, habits, possessions would you like to have right now? For every person, it is going to be different. Find out the channels that are built around those exact things, where you can see them, channels that make those things feel tangible. And that tangibility is very important because everyday exposure to your desire builds a connection. You learn about it, you consume the aspects around it, and every day it becomes more and more real. Another thing that it does is, it brings a comparison. You can compare the choices you make in your everyday life with the choices you would need to make to actualize your dreams. And it starts affecting your smallest decisions in your daily life, which in accumulation are the driving force of your life story. What would aspirational visualization be in an example? Let's say you want to become a very rational person. In that case, the channels are going to be where thought of all kinds and types gets challenged, discussed and discovered. If you want to be a millionaire, then the channels will have to be the ones that surround themselves around such lifestyles. If you successfully force yourself to manage social media, where the 90% consists of that, then you will be pursuing your interest through your addiction. 10% is entertainment. Laughter is a great thing for your mind but it keeps you stagnant. What grows your mind is knowledge. So increase the dosage of knowledge and reduce laughter to that needed supply of refreshment because that's what it is, refreshment. So use it for that. But to avail this life altering invention, and I mean your phone, you would need to want to change your life. Point three, because you may think that that 10% can be easily restored. What you don't realize is that 10% is constantly evolving based on research and is going to remain 10% as long as you remain motivated. The moment your motivation slips away, it is going to take over. So prepare in here. Take control of your life. You have a grand opportunity of transforming your entire personality by sitting alone with your laptop or your phone. And you are basically saying, maybe tomorrow to that opportunity. I want to thank all those who have subscribed to my channel, basically supporting my content and believing in me. Thank you very much. If you are on Instagram and Twitter and would like to receive snippets of motivation to keep fueling that fire throughout the day, you can follow us there at Mensuta. Keep growing, keep conquering and have a great day.